To start getting a feel for how the associative array environment works, let's just take a simple familiar example that we've probably all used in AutoCAD a million times. And that would be a polar array done on a 2D plane, which we're going to use this shrub here arrayed around this tree along this circular path in order to give us a polar array for a landscaping island. So what we'll immediately notice is that we'll go ahead and select the polar array up here from our ribbon. We'll go ahead and select the shrub, finalize our selection, and then I have a center object snap enabled so we can easily reference the center point of that referencing circle. Now, as I pull my cursor around, you'll see that the number of items is being drawn for me graphically in a preview sort of mode, but please notice the default behavior of the prompt, which is asking me for the number of items that I'd like to draw. I'll go ahead and answer that 12. Now, the previewing continues, but you'll notice that we're only having 12 shrubs that are arrayed around a different number of degrees to form the final array. And again, please notice that the prompt is asking us for the angle to fill. I'll go ahead and default that to 360 or a complete circle. Now that we've given enough input to actually form an array, we're in a preview mode where we can go in and now actually edit some of the functionalities here, like the base point of the array. I could easily change the number of items. Rather than 12 shrubs, perhaps our budget's dropped a little, and we'd like to go to 10 shrubs. So it's very easy to do that. Or perhaps I would want to go ahead and set the fill angle to maybe just 180 degrees, so I could get my 10 shrubs filled around the front of the tree to give a more dense landscaping appearance. There's a few other parameters that we're going to look at later in this series, like rows and levels, which have to do with 3D polar arrays, but we'll bypass those for the moment. And of course, we could set the rotational behavior of the items here as to whether they're to be rotated as they're copied. Ultimately, when we get happy with our result, we simply hit exit, and we've now formed an associative array. And what we'll be looking at in the next couple of segments is the fact that this array is just that, one array, which we could easily demonstrate by simply selecting anywhere on the arrayed objects. And that's not 10 different shrubs. It is one associative array. And we'll be able to actually go back and edit that. So you're going to see the array command starting to look and feel very much like some of the intelligent hatch functionality that you've been seeing in the last few releases of AutoCAD. So there you go, just a, a brief overview of how to construct and preview two-dimensional associative arrays. Next up, we're going to start to look at some of the editing functionality that we can take advantage of using associative arrays.